So we've got uh, quite a number of community members uh, joining us this evening, so we will uh, get started. First of all, a nice warm welcome to you all, and I do hope that you are all safe and healthy. Um, this evening is um, what we're calling a, an ACG School Jakarta uh, Parent Community Webinar. Uh, we're just going to cover off a few things uh, early in the piece, and then we will uh, talk a little bit more about um, some of our, our possible uh, thoughts around reopening uh, of the school. Um, I would like to uh, begin uh, by warmly welcoming members of the academic leadership team. Uh, Jennifer Kessler. Uh, I'm sure Jennifer is somewhere there. Uh, Dave Brundage is also with us uh, this Good afternoon. afternoon. Hi, Dave. Nice to hear your voice. And Richard Todd. Good evening. Nice to hear your voice. Joanne Dickinson is with us. Good afternoon. Hi, Joanne. And Vanessa Ellison is with us. Vanessa was with us. And perhaps, Scepter, if you can uh, give Jennifer the ability to say hello to everyone. Okay, let me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Great to have you here with us. Okay, well, we'll get into the first slide. So it's a little bit of housekeeping to start with uh, this afternoon. If you could move to the second slide, Septa. Um, so uh, this uh, this slide was actually typed. Oh, if you just Sorry. Uh, yep. So the continuation of virtual schooling. So unofficially, we plan to continue virtual schooling through until next Friday. Um, we are waiting for official updates from the Ministry of Education. Uh, this afternoon, uh, we had uh, some announcements through the media, but we will certainly wait for uh, official notification uh, from the government before we communicate that to our wider community, but certainly at this stage, our focus is on continuing virtual schooling through until uh, next Friday. Uh, next slide, please, Septa. So we do have some upcoming events. Um, tomorrow we, uh, we kick off and then next week we've got a couple of events as well. So next slide, uh, we have our, our first e-graduation uh, so that kicks off at two o'clock uh, tomorrow afternoon. That's live on YouTube. Uh, so hopefully you can join us for that. And then the following Friday, uh, we have uh, a secondary prize giving. Uh, that is directly after our end of year assembly, uh, which kicks off at eight, eight o'clock. So we've got the assembly followed by uh, the prize giving. So. Uh, a few events there uh, that will be um, broadcast through YouTube, and we do hope that many of you will join in and be a part of our community and acknowledge and celebrate uh, the great work that has taken place throughout this year. A few other reminders for our families particularly. Uh, Scepter, if you can move to the next slide. Um, so our, our classes will officially run through until next Thursday. Next Friday is really an opportunity for all of us to uh, wind up the school year, the academic school year. Uh, we've got our assembly, we've got our prize giving, and then it's an opportunity for homeroom teachers and advisors uh, to farewell uh, our students who are leaving the school and also wishing uh, the students uh, a safe uh, and enjoyable holiday break, which I'm sure we are all uh, desperately looking forward to uh, next Friday. So um, just be aware of that. If your parents listening in, if your students listening in, that is the plan as we move forward. Uh, just a couple of other things. We, um, we will get some information about library resource returns out to families uh, tomorrow, uh, but homeroom teachers and advisors can inform students of the process there. Uh, if students have got any sports uniforms, they can return them to our security as well. Um, we do have academic reports that will be released 
next Friday via ManageBack. And if you are not able to log into ManageBack um, or you're needing some technical support, please reach out to your child's homeroom teacher or advisor in the first instance. Um, certainly contact me if you get really stuck and we'll help you out. Um, and then for those of you who are looking for additional information, visit our website, our ACG school website. And if you go to the section parent essentials, you'll see lots of information in there. And particularly at this time of the year, uh, if you're looking for specific documents, um, you can request documents through our document request form as well as student withdrawal form if you're needing that. So just a, a, a bit of information there to begin this evening. Next slide, please. Great. So, look, we've um, obviously had um, a number of weeks now um, since we uh, moved to virtual schooling, uh, the 2nd of March. Um, and so we've had uh, quite a bit of time to um, have a bit of a think about um, how we're going to uh, reopen the school um, when that time comes. But um, I just wanted to really start this evening by making sure that people understand that um, we're in a, an environment that is ever-changing. Um, information uh, is, new information is becoming available um, quite frequently and, and things are changing. So if you can imagine um, changes with uh, uh, widespread restrictions, changes with immigration, um, you know, changes with how we conduct ourselves as citizens in the city. Um, so it is a challenging time for everyone and we're all navigating through this uh, stage of our lives as best we can. Um, so this afternoon, I'm, I'm going to talk about a few things which um, are not set in stone. They're not things that uh, we will absolutely move forward with uh, in August, but they are things that we need to consider as a school as we develop our contingency plan for reopening. And, and I'll start by saying that um, our priority and our priority all along is to ensure uh, the safety and well-being of our students and staff. And so that must uh, be at the forefront of our thinking when we are developing a contingency plan. So as you will see this afternoon, that a good part of this contingency plan um, at the beginning is, is driven by a lot of um, safeguarding and, and health and safety measures. And the, the, the teaching and learning part of things comes certainly uh, towards the back end uh, of the uh, presentation this afternoon. Um, I do want to acknowledge that um, we're, we're very fortunate in that we are a part of a, a larger group of schools. We're a part of inspired education group, uh, a network of 65 schools. And so the, the ideas or the considerations that you'll see in this presentation tonight um, have been developed um, by our wider community. So it's not just myself and the academic leadership team um, sitting down and, and dreaming up uh, these ideas. These are uh, contingencies and considerations that have been um, developed across our group of schools. and. Uh, we're in a fortunate position in the Asia Pacific region where we've had our schools in New Zealand, Australia and Vietnam uh, already reopen. So we're the only uh, school in the group at the moment uh, in the Asia Pacific that, that hasn't reopened. But of course we do have um, many of our other schools uh, in South America, uh, Europe uh, and the Middle East uh, and South Africa uh, that are still uh, working through virtual schooling. Um, so we'll just move to the next slide, Scepter. So when we're thinking about uh, reopening the school and obviously, um, you know, in the situation that we're in, as much as we have worked really hard and, and we've done a lot of great things with virtual schooling, I'm sure many of you will agree that um, when we get back to school, um, I think we'll, we'll feel a lot more connected and, and we'll be able to continue the great learning um, that was in place prior to uh, the COVID-19 situation. But one of the major considerations, of course, that we have here in Indonesia and in Jakarta 
uh, government directives. And so um, at all times, we obviously um, need to follow the, the regulations and the guidelines that are, pu are put before us. Um, so those government directives are going to be really critical over the next uh, few months. Um, we also have to um, have health and safety uh, at the forefront of our minds and make sure that before we reopen uh, our campus uh, and our operations are safe for students and for staff. We also need to um, consider that there is a possibility that we, we reopen uh, with hybrid pedagogies. And what that essentially means is that we may have a combination of virtual uh, schooling and regular classes um, so that's something that we also need to consider. Um, we also need to consider that things are going to change. And so uh, a need uh, to have a continuum of practice in, in place to be very responsive to the changes that take place, particularly as government regulations or government directives are put forward. We need to be very aware of those. Um, one of the critical parts of reopening is uh, again, surveying parents and making sure that we um, listen to the voice of our parents. And so thank you to those who have contributed to our surveys up till now. Um, obviously, uh, we will come back to you um, in the next little while uh, with an additional survey before we reopen the school. And, and most importantly, uh, we need to uh, adapt to the changes. Um, and as we reopen the school, uh, we need to be flexible and understanding and supportive of each other uh, as we, we re reopen and we deal with uh, the various uh, measures that we put in place. Uh, next slide, please, Sipra. So at the moment, we, we are really uh, looking at uh, three possible scenarios. Um, the first scenario is our most ideal scenario, and that is that the school reopens fully on the 10th of August, and we have all students and staff in attendance, and uh, we have safeguarding practices in place. And so that's something that uh, we'll be spending uh, a lot of our time and energy uh, working on over the next few weeks to make sure that all of those safeguarding measures in place. Um, scenario two is a, is a tricky one for us as a community. Uh, depending on what happens with, with government regulations and the, the situation in the city, we may be looking at a partial reopening. Uh, we may be looking at a hybrid appro approach, uh, implementing uh, both virtual and regular classrooms. And then finally, the third scenario, which I'm, I'm guessing many of us are, are not wishing uh, we will have to deal with, and that is uh, the continuation of virtual schooling. So. Um, I'm presenting, we're presenting those scenarios this afternoon um, because um, our thinking is making sure that we actually consider these different scenarios moving forward. But again, obviously, um, the bulk of our time and energy is focused on scenario one. Next slide, Sipra, please. So there's a lot to consider uh, when we are um, looking at um, safeguarding practices. Um, and so obviously parent surveys uh, are important. We need to um, consider what, uh, how, what parents are thinking, uh, what they are considering uh, in sending their children back to school. So we'll be sending out a survey mid-July to our families just to make sure that um, we're, we're listening to your concerns. Uh, we're um, uh, taking into account uh, some of uh, the things that make uh, us anxious as parents, uh, and then we will work through them as best we can. Other things that we will consider along the way, um, reducing numbers of students in classrooms. We're in a, in a pretty unique situation as a school. Even before COVID-19, we were around just over 50% capacity as a school. So we do have plenty of space. Um, so we will be looking at reorganizing the school spaces. We'll be looking at, um, looking at our scheduling a little bit closer. Uh, we may be looking at student bubbles. We may be looking at um, staff separation in teams, uh, contact tracing. Um, there are some things that we're obviously considering as a part of our contingency, but again, this afternoon, I want to make it really clear to our community that they're not necessarily things that we will 
move forward with or feel that we uh, have to put in place. But they are certainly things that we are trying to cover off um, as we develop our contingency plan. We'll obviously um, look at uh, social distancing rules and procedures, um, both in the classroom and uh, when classes are not um, uh, in action. So that's something that we'll consider. Obviously, entry and exit procedures, um, the usage of masks, cleaning procedures, uh, hygiene practices. Um, we'll obviously um, look at um, those most vulnerable in our community, particularly our staff, um, and make sure that um, we've considered uh, a lot of those safeguarding practices uh, before we reopen. Uh, next slide, please, Sophia. So as I said, um, so we need to have an understanding of, of how many uh, students we have returning to school. If we're looking at scenario one, uh, we, you know, we're expecting a similar number uh, of students to what we have currently. Um, so that needs to be a consideration in terms of how we manage those students coming in. And obviously that will inform our staffing, our curriculum and our pedagogy decisions. Uh, next question, uh, next uh, slide, thanks. So reduced utilization of facility capacity, that really is very much about how we use the space and how we maintain social distancing and how we keep everybody safe when they are on campus. That is a major consideration for us moving forward. Next slide, Sipta. So student bubbles. Um, student bubbles uh, are in practice in, in some of our other schools. Um, and again, it's something that we will consider as a school. Um, we'll be looking at um, the, the guidelines and the regulations that will come through the Ministry of Education, but we'll also look at um, the international best practice and how we manage groups of students and we maintain safety. Um, we'll look at uh, grouping students with teachers uh, and making sure that they have designated areas, uh, bathroom, play areas, um, areas for eating and so on. Um, and we'll obviously look at mapping all of that out for our community so that they're clear. When they do come onto campus, they know which designated area or areas they are to go to. Next slide. Uh, again, with, with student bubbles, we're also looking at uh, staff teams um, and making sure that um, we follow um, local government requirements, but also making sure that uh, our staff teams support uh, our student bubbles or our, our general learning bubbles and making sure that there's safety uh, for all of our staff uh, when they are on campus. Next slide, Septa. So contact tracing is a, is a tricky one uh, in Indonesia, um, but, it's, but it's important for us to, to make sure that we uh, keep records uh, of students and staff and visitors on campus. Um, and so we will uh, put measures in place, um, particularly um, around um, entry uh, points where we uh, collect information at the beginning of the day, we'll be collecting information and making sure that we have an understanding of, um, of who has been in contact with whom and making sure that uh, we can uh, look at uh, tracing uh, any uh, positive issue, positive uh, cases that, that may come up. Um, but again, we're, we're looking to, to put some measures in place where obviously um, we want to keep our campus safe and we want to make sure that we're not having to deal with um, tracing positive cases. Um, but that is something that we will um, have in place to ensure that we have uh, those measures there. Next slide, thanks, Sipta. So we're all familiar with um, social distancing, I am sure. Um, it's a very challenging uh, procedure to put in place in schools and we will be looking at different ways in which we can do this. Obviously, we need to consider how that, what that looks like in our kindergarten, what that looks like in our primary school and in our middle school and high school. Um, when students are not in class, uh, what does social distancing look like? And again, these are 
considerations that we're, we're looking at with our contingency plan. Um, but again, it depends largely on what the, the current uh, climate is like, the environment is like, uh, as we get closer to uh, August and our, and our reopening date. Um, but again, these are things that we certainly may have to implement um, on the 10th of August. Uh, next slide, Seth, I think. So again, um, in classrooms, there are a number of factors that we will consider um, as a part of our contingency plan. Um, obviously, um, looking at how students uh, line up to, to go into the classroom, um, keeping their distance, looking at the seating arrangements of classrooms, um, looking at um, how students uh, regularly um, wash their hands, use soap and sanitizer. And these are all factors that we need to put in place prior to reopening. Um, we'll also um, obviously need to work with our group of students and make sure that they have an understanding of the importance of these procedures that we will put in place. Um, and again, obviously, depending on the age group uh, of the students, uh, there will be some um, consideration there in terms of how we implement uh, our classroom management um, as we reopen the school. Next slide, Seth. Okay, so the, the playground environment, similar to uh, the approach that we would take um, with uh, the classroom, um, obviously looking at um, areas that are divided up, um, we need to mark areas and if we've got uh, groups of students or bubbles created, then they will be assigned particular areas. Um, we obviously need to make sure that we uh, look at social distancing rules. In terms of play equipment, we need to make sure that we um, are uh, regularly um, monitoring that situation and making sure that the, the bubbles or the groups of students have access to, to their play equipment. Um, and so there are a range of things there that, that we will be uh, looking at and considering to, to make sure that the environment, not only in the classroom and in the buildings, but also out in the playground uh, is safe. Next slide. Okay, um, so in terms of toys, um, we, we obviously will be working very closely with our early years practitioners and we'll be looking at um, some um, support from outside of our school and across our network of school with our other early learning centers. Um, but it'll be really important for us to make sure that uh, in our early years environment, uh, our kindergarten through to lower primary, that uh, the, the equipment and the resources that the children uh, use on a, on a regular basis um, are um, clean and disinfected regularly um, so that we know that they are uh, working and playing uh, and learning in a safe environment. Next slide. Thanks, Sipta. Okay, so um, again with bathrooms, um, we, we need to continue with some of the practices that we, um, we certainly put in place prior to uh, our virtual schooling, um, looking at um, really emphasizing the importance of, of hygiene, uh, hand sanitizer. Um, we will be looking at um, avoiding hand dryers and using disposable paper. Again, it's a consideration. It's not something that we definitely move through with. Um, and then, of course, looking at different practices and ways in which we maintain a high level of hygiene. Um, so there are some things that we will consider there. Next slide. Thanks, Sipta. The cafeteria, um, certainly being another tricky area um, for us as a school, um, obviously, um, we need to make a decision on whether we reopen the cafeteria or not, uh, whether we have a, a staggered approach to morning breaks and lunch breaks, as, lunch breaks um, whether we have limited seating arrangements so that we've got smaller groups of students uh, congregating in the cafeteria and using those facilities. So these are all things that we are uh, closely looking at at the moment and making sure that 
uh, when students do return to school on the 10th of August, uh, we will have um, these procedures in place and students will be uh, required to, to follow those procedures. Um, for how long? We're not quite sure, but again, it's a part of being adaptable and adjust uh, our procedures and our processes over time. But this is certainly a key area for us here to make sure that we, um, we have safety, not only in our classrooms, in our playgrounds, but also our cafeteria. Next slide, thanks. Uh, changing rooms again uh, will be a consideration, particularly in our environment where swimming is popular and, and our primary students are swimming on a weekly basis. Um, so we do need to make sure that, um, again, the changing rooms and the uh, conduct and the way in which we manage those change rooms is in line with our, our contingency across uh, other areas of our school. Next slide, Septa. The drop-off and pick-up procedures are probably the most challenging for us given the uh, location of the school and the limited um, access and exit points. Um, so we'll be looking closely at some of the suggested guidelines that are here on this slide and see how they apply to, to our environment and what we can do uh, to ensure that uh, there is safety uh, for students being dropped off and picked up at school. Um, so this is a really critical area for us, um, given that we do essentially have four vehicles, uh, one exit point, one entrance point. We do have obviously uh, entry points uh, for people walking to school, um, but we need to make sure that those areas uh, are managed well and so that we have procedures in place to, to ensure that um, the people who are coming on campus uh, are able to be on campus and uh, we can maintain safety on campus. Uh, next slide, thanks. So cleaning, we, we've been uh, increasing our uh, cleaning procedures um, really since January of this year when um, the, um, the COVID-19 outbreak really um, was at the forefront of our minds kind of coming out of China. Um, we have increased um, hygiene measures and practices in our school and, and we will continue um, to put uh, a number of other things in place uh, to ensure that our, uh, all areas of our campus um, are, are clean and tidy and hygienic. Um, and this is a, a big task for all of us, um, but it's something that um, we are working really hard at and we will certainly have some good procedures in place um, which will be, again, a, a real, uh, another step um, uh, beyond what we currently have in place. And, and our practices at the moment uh, are of a very high standard. So this is something that we will continue to work on as a school community. Next slide, thanks, Sipta. Again, I mean, hygiene uh, procedures are not just about our, our cleaning services, but it's about how we uh, operate and conduct ourselves, um, students, teachers, staff. And so these are things that we will be um, sending out some really clear messages and communicating very regularly to our community about best hygiene practices um, so that, uh, you know, we have the best possible chance of limiting um, any positive case of COVID-19 entering our campus. And so a part of what we do is is helping the wider community um, get on top of this, this virus. So uh, hygiene procedures will be very much um, a key part of our um, contingency plan for August. Next slide, thanks, Septa. So this is a, uh, an area that's uh, hotly debated, I guess, uh, across different sections of our community and across uh, different parts of the globe. Um, but I think what we've, what we've observed in Indonesia and in Jakarta um, is people being really responsible and compliant and when they're heading outside, they're, they're wearing masks. And it is something, this will be largely directed by uh, government regulations, but we will obviously uh, need to make a decision on whether uh, our staff and our students are required to wear masks um, as they enter the campus uh, and 
remain on campus for the day. So again, this is just um, some suggested guidelines for us to consider. It's not something that we have made a, a firm decision on yet. Um, but certainly it's a part of our overall contingency plan that we do need to consider. Next slide. There's a lot of writing there, symptoms check and procedures. We've, we, we put uh, procedures in place, uh, certainly very early on prior to uh, 2nd of March. Uh, and again, um, we will continue to um, look at ways in which we can improve um, how we check for symptoms and what procedures we put in place uh, to ensure that our campus is safe. I don't want to go into all of the details here of this, this suggested guideline or procedure, um, but we'll build on the practices that we have already had in place. Um, but I think for most of us, there's an expectation that when we do return to school, uh, we will be returning to school knowing that, um, you know, we will be getting our temperatures checked regularly and there will, be, there will be procedures in place to identify any uh, possible symptoms that need to be reported and we'll go from there. So what we, what we want from our community is what we've always had and that is uh, full cooperation and support and understanding knowing that we're trying to create an environment and a, and a place where everyone is safe, uh, everyone feels supported. Uh, it's not to give people a hard time and to send them to the doctors just to trouble them, but it's to make sure that everyone um, is safe and that everyone uh, is working together uh, to ensure the safety of uh, our entire community. Uh, next slide, Septa, please. Uh, again, that's just a little bit more about uh, temperature checks and looking at uh, uh, the, the, the temperatures there. Um, I think we had a 37.5 measurement or thereabouts um, prior to the 2nd of March. Again, we'll, we'll look at these things um, closer to the time, have a look at the regulations that are in place. But again, we've got some of these uh, contingencies already covered off. Um, but again, the things that we will need to review over the next few weeks. Um, look, one of the tricky uh, aspects of reopening in Jakarta um, is um, making sure that we have a full understanding of who is coming onto campus. Um, so if, we're, if we've got external service providers that are coming on campus, um, there needs to be really strict procedures in place to ensure the safety of our students and staff. And so we'll be looking closely at uh, the, the way in which we manage our external service providers. We had people coming onto campus to service air conditioning units, swimming pool, and, and various other things. So again, it's not that we're going to exclude uh, all of these people uh, from the campus, but we will have some procedures in place and measures in place to ensure that um, we protect uh, our entire community. Next slide, Septa. Uh, so likewise, um, Obviously, from time to time, we do have visitors uh, coming on campus. Um, and so there will be um, procedures in place to ensure that we uh, maintain a safe campus. Um, and so these procedures will be specific to visitors. Um, some of our thinking is, is around how we're, we're limiting uh, visitors from, from coming onto campus. And I think in the early stages, we'll be very cautious and uh, we'll certainly uh, be working towards uh, limiting uh, the number of visitors that we do have on campus and also having a, a look at uh, the types of events that we have because we have, uh, whether they're sporting events or music events, we have uh, students and staff from other schools coming onto our campus. So there are things that we, we need to consider uh, with our overall contingency plan uh, prior to the 10th of August. Next slide, Septa. So um, signage is a really important part of our contingency plan. Um, we obviously um, have an international community. Uh, we have, uh, you know, 30 plus nationalities. Uh, for, for some of our community members, English is not their first language. Um, so we'll be looking at ways in which we can um, make it really clear uh, with what the expectations are around uh, social distancing, 
around hygiene practices, um, making sure that we have uh, clear signage around our entry and exit points, um, making sure that we have expectations clearly set out. Um, and so you'll see that when you do come onto campus uh, in August that um, you, you may see a, a lot more uh, signage. Um, it might not be that attractive, um, but it'll certainly, um, we will endeavor to try and make it clear and uh, make sure that people have a very clear understanding of what the expectations are when they do come onto our campus. Next slide, Septa. You right there, Septa? Yep, okay. So up until now, we've really, um, I've really spoken a lot about um, safeguarding and, and health and safety measures as a part of our, our thinking around our contingency plan, um, reopening the school. Um, what I haven't quite deliberately spent a lot of time talking about is pedagogy and, and how we go about focusing on teaching and learning uh, in our school. Um, my hope is that um, we get teachers back into the classroom and we get students back into the classroom um, where really great learning and teaching takes place. Um, obviously, what we will be looking at is um, what we've learned uh, over the 14, 15 weeks of virtual schooling, fingers crossed, um, and take all of the, the positive practices um, of our journey through virtual schooling and hopefully continue to build on some of the skills that our teachers and our students have developed um, and really um, <clears throat> take a lot of the, the flipped or blended model of, of teaching and learning uh, into our classrooms for the next academic year. Um, but it is something that we'll be working with the faculty on, um, looking at um, some of the, the really good practice that has taken place uh, over this period of time. Uh, not lose that, um, but build on that, um, but also um, consider how we can best uh, manage if it is a hybrid situation that we, that we are facing, how do we do that really well? Um, and again, a lot of this will be dependent on um, what um, scenario we are looking at come 10th of August. Um, so as I said uh, earlier, we, we may need to look at um, different ways of structuring our day uh, different ways of timetabling and, and looking at some, some blended learning, <clears throat> excuse me, that will take place going into the next school year. And that will vary. It, it may be that we, we look at uh, in the um, early years area, we may look at some, some split days, mornings and afternoons. Um, again, this is all a part of the contingency plan and things that we do have to consider if we, we get to August and we're having to, to continue with um, fairly strict measures in place. So again, this is really just some, some suggestions and ideas. As I have, I guess, repeated a couple of times this afternoon, my hope um, is that we can, can get into um, regular uh, classes and, and regular learning. Um, we, we will look at how we use our space, how we structure our day, um, to make sure that we're reducing how much contact people have. But this is all a part of our, our contingency plan that we are going to work on um, and really refine over the next few weeks as we learn more about uh, the situation that we are in. Um, again, with our, with our staff, um, you know, one of the tricky things at the moment, of course, with, with most schools, in international schools in Indonesia, is um, how we go about um, getting uh, our new teachers uh, into Indonesia, uh, ready to start the school year um, and uh, what that looks like. Um, obviously, if we do um, go through, um, you know, a scenario where we're looking at a blended uh, model or a hybrid model, we'll need to look at how we utilize uh, our staffing and, and how we allocate staff to support student bubbles, to support, to support student groups, um, and also to support that, that hybrid approach of regular classes versus 
um, uh, online learning or virtual schooling. So again, it's a consideration in how we um, utilize and, and manage our staff moving forward. We're almost there. Excellent, great. So um, I think at this particular point in time, we're going to open up for any questions that people have. And I might just um, uh, really just make it, make it clear that there may be some questions that we can't answer uh, this evening, um, but we will try and get back to people um, as best we can. So the first question is from Simon uh, Ford. Uh, for temperature checks, will the thermometers be more accurate prior to closing when temperature uh, was checked? So that's a really good question and it's something that we have addressed, uh, Simon, and, and also other community members. And we are looking at um, um, our, our temperature guns that, that we have purchased um, and looking at making sure that if we are checking temperatures, we're using uh, quality equipment to ensure that we are getting accurate readings. So excellent question there. Any other questions from people at this particular point in time? It's like one of our, our Zoom or, or team meetings where everyone is silent and there's a oh, there's hundred participants online at the moment. I'm sure someone's got a question. Okay, so a couple of questions coming through now. Um, so if we would like our kids to remain studying virtually after school opens, is it still possible? Uh, yes, look, I mean, that's certainly a part of our uh, contingency plan, uh, knowing that we, we may have um, some families who um, may not be in Indonesia. We may have some staff members who may not be in Indonesia. So we may be forced to look at that hybrid model uh, initially so that we can support students who are still waiting to come back into Indonesia or if a family is choosing at that time on the 10th of August for their child to remain at home, can they access virtual learning and what does that look like? So again, it's something that we are considering. Um, so another question uh, there, um, So I'll just uh, go to the next question on my list, which is um, what will occur if there is a positive case in the school? Um, so that's a really good question. Um, so at the moment, um, we are looking at um, case studies that have occurred in other countries um, where there have been uh, positive cases in schools and um, again, it's a little bit dependent on the um, ability for us to, um, to contact trace and make sure that um, we've identified um, who that person has been in contact with. Um, it may be that uh, a class is uh, asked to remain in quarantine for a period of time. It may be that the school um, goes into uh, enforced school closure and remains in quarantine for a period of time. Um, but again, we're looking closely at the practices um, of um, other schools and, and other institutions and how they're handling um, that particular scenario. Uh, so I'll just go to the, the, the next one on the list. Um, so we've been told about three scenarios. Uh, in this situation, which scenario do you think is more realistic? Um, well, well, look, that's a really difficult question. Obviously, we, we hope that scenario one is something that plays out. Um, but again, right now, um, what I can do is, is say that we're looking at those three possible scenarios. Um, look, I'm, I'm obviously, um, you know, wanting to remain positive um, and, you know, look on, on the positive side. But at the moment, I'm not prepared to say which one is more realistic at this point. We will plan for all three. Um, um, so the next question is uh, the decision to, uh, on which scenario is taken will also depend on the feedback from the parents 
Um, yes, absolutely. We will obviously um, consider the feedback of the parents. When we last did a survey, um, we had um, a, a quarter of the parents who uh, were comfortable with sending their children back to school and three quarters who were not. So again, we will we'll look at those numbers closer to the time. Uh, how close to the school reopening will you make the final decision about the type of learning? Um, look, as soon as, as soon as possible, really. Um, obviously, if we, um, we get information um, by the end of this month, then we'll obviously get that information out to families. Um, but again, you know, the decision making uh, can largely be dictated by um, what uh, government regulations um, we need to have in place. Um, but again, we'll be trying to get information out to families. I know that we've got families in other countries at the moment waiting to um, either to return or, or a bit of a date in terms of whether school will, will regular classes will return uh, in August. We'll get that information to you as soon as we can. Uh, the next question, what measures will be taken for kids using school transport? Um, that's a really good question. It is a part of our contingency. It's not something contingency. It's not something that we covered this afternoon, um, but we will have practices in place. The pick up and drop off practices will also include um, picking up children from uh, their residence or their apartments with our school transport. Uh, temperature checking, hygiene practices uh, will also be in place to ensure that students who are essentially picked up by our school transport are on campus in that vehicle from the time they, they are picked up and then of course dropped off. So again, that's something that will be a part of our, our pick up and drop off. Uh, I'll just go to a couple of others. Um, pick, up, uh, pick up and drop off is an important link. I understand parents, oh, that's just gone now. Sorry, I need to set that just a bit quick. That's going. I'll uh, read the next question. For new arriving students and in case of continued virtual schooling, are you considering initiatives to allow social integration of new students? Yeah, look, this is a really, really critical one. Um, we're, we're obviously looking at ways in which we can address that even, even now at the end of the school year. How can we have, you know, usually we have class parties and class celebrations and kids getting together. So how can we do that? Uh, similarly, with the way in which we have new students arriving to the school, and if we are in a hybrid model or a virtual school model, what does that look like for new students? How do we go through uh, linking them up with buddies? How do, we get, how do we support them in integrating into their class, getting to know um, their classmates and their teachers um, at a social level? Um, so there are things that we are also having a look at for the beginning of the school year, knowing that it is very unlikely that we'll be able to kick off the school year with our um, family picnic, which was such a hit last year. Um, it doesn't look like that we'll be able to start the school year with a family picnic, um, but we may look at some, um, some virtual ways in which we can connect students and parents uh, virtually. Uh, the next question, there are positive cases of COVID-19 that don't exhibit symptoms. How is this going to be managed? Really good question. Uh, I don't have an answer to that right now. Um, that's a, a challenge that I think um, we all have within our community, whether that's malls opening up, um, the, the economy opening up here and what, what impact that's going to have. Um, but I'll certainly come back to you on the way in which we address that um, through our communication. Um, will you require a PCR COVID test for all students before the school year starts? Um, look, at, at this stage, that is something that we are considering um, as a part of our contingency plan, but it's not something that I can uh, definitely answer this evening, but a really good question. Uh, if ACG adopts the hybrid model, what kind of activities that require students to be in school other than PE? Uh, okay, so I think there's a, a question there about possible after school activities uh, and things, and that's something that we will have to consider uh, if we do go to that hybrid model, something I can't answer right now. Um, how will ACG handle students in which parents travel domestically and or internationally for business and may be subject to quarantine requirements upon returning Jakarta? 
So we, we had some measures in place um, prior to the 2nd of March, and I think this is really important for all of us to understand. We had an online register uh, where we really relied on um, uh, good faith and, and trust in our community members to, to register and log uh, any travel um, that they had or, or that their family members had so that we are aware of um, uh, what the travel arrangements were for families. And so we will take that a step further uh, going into the next school year um, where we're looking at a better way to um, collect that information to make sure that we are well on top of that information, particularly with domestic travel. Um, some of the restrictions around traveling uh, from Jakarta to outside of Jakarta, um, we need to consider uh, and how we go about collecting that information. But that's a really important part of our, our contingency moving forward. So a few more questions coming through. Um, could you share the key slides of your presentation? Yes, we will make uh, the presentation uh, available probably uh, a little bit friendlier, uh, just um, a, a, a more um, perhaps condensed version for, for parents, but we'll certainly make the presentation available. Um, will regular weekly school updates continue over the summer holidays? Excellent question. Um, most of our teachers, I hope, um, are going to enjoy a holiday. Um, there will be some staff members who um, will not be enjoying the holiday. Um, um, I will be one of them. Um, so I will not be on holidays um, through the summer. Um, I will try and um, try and relax uh, on occasion, but uh, you know the focus for myself and some some key personnel in our school over the holiday period will be to make sure that we're working hard so that the start of the next school year um, will launch with um, real success. And, and so, so that question there around weekly updates, um, we, we will be looking at um, some uh, regular updates. We haven't made a decision on whether they're weekly, um, but we will be looking at regular updates um, right from um, the week after we break up. So, um, uh, so that's the week uh, 15th of June. So um, look out for those updates, check your uh, email and your WhatsApp messages, but we'll try and um, maintain connection with our community as much as possible uh, over the holiday, holiday break. And for most of our mums and dads there, um, if you have a question or you, you desperately need to get in contact with the school, please feel free to contact me by email um, and I'd be happy to follow up there. Um, so there's a few comments there um, uh, about the PCR rapid testing. Um, so again, it's a requirement for any of our new staff and staff who are returning to Indonesia in order for them to actually enter Indonesia, they're required to have that test. Um, we are discussing um, whether that's something that we will extend to obviously uh, other staff members currently in Indonesia as well as uh, our students. Uh, wearing masks is most important, excellent comment. Uh, the risk is still high without a vaccine. How do we recognize uh, non-infected? Again, that's a, the, 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 um, the people who don't exhibit symptoms um, is, a, is a real challenge for us as a community. So that's something that, um, that we will try and address over time. A couple of other questions. How about the year six student to introduce to the, uh, so it's not the MYP, it's the, uh, the Cambridge Lower Secondary Syllabus. Um, so again, um, like we are planning to do with our, uh, our new students, our students who are transitioning into new programs, whether that's moving from year six into year seven, or year nine into year 10 with IGCSE, or year 11 into year 12. Um, we'll be looking at some ways in which we can cover off the, the key points of the, the curriculum and the programs that they are about to embark on and make sure that the induction processes um, are um, as best that we can make them. Obviously, that also includes kindergarten children and, and their, their start to school. Um, so that's something that we'll be working with 
uh, Vanessa and Richard on to make sure that that is planned. Um, so a couple of other questions there. Is there anything parents can assist the school with to prepare for next year? Really, really good question. Um, look, I think um, particularly for parents who are on the ground here in Indonesia, um, you know, we, we do have um, some, some maintenance plans and we do have um, some plans for our school facilities. Um, so what I will do is I'll outline some of those in our next update um, and I'll reach out to some, some families. But if you are um, in Jakarta and you have some time up your sleeves, um, I've always got um, lots of jobs that I can uh, ask people to do. So it'd be fantastic um, if we could have family members and, and parents pitching in and helping out. Um, so again, um, I'll put some things in our next update, um, but if you are keen on helping out, um, let me know and we'll go from there. Um, there's always lots of painting to do for some reason. Um, there's, a tr there's one question, a tricky question. Do you have faith in the Indonesian government's COVID-19 reporting to date uh, with regards to people currently re uh, residing outside and considering a returning, but not really having much trust? Yeah, look, I mean, in the information that, uh, that we're getting through the media and, and obviously uh, official reports, we, um, we obviously consider um, but we know that the situation in, in Indonesia um, is really challenging. And um, so, you know, this is developing a contingency plan for a school reopening is not something that we are, are doing lightly. Um, we have a number of um, people involved in, in developing this contingency plan. And of course, it will take into account the information and, and the current climate uh, of Jakarta specifically, but also uh, wider Indonesia. Are there any plans or recommendations for those students who travel with public transport or school buses? Um, so I think I've answered that earlier. The procedures around school buses um, will be put in place to ensure that uh, temperature checking and hygiene is, is monitored. Um, but again, that's something that we will outline for our families at a later date. Um, are you planning on holding a year six graduation ceremony? Well, a number of weeks ago, we, we held our PYP exhibition, which was essentially um, our, uh, our opportunity to celebrate and acknowledge uh, that milestone in uh, their, their schooling. Um, our end of year assembly will certainly acknowledge uh, the year sixes going into year seven and our secondary prize giving will also do the same. How likely is the school to reopen on the 10th of August? Um, if not, what is the contingency? Uh, again, I've outlined the three contingency plans or ideas. Um, look, again, we're focusing our time and our energy on a 10th of August opening. So um, and that might be false confidence, but that's, that's what we're working towards at the moment. Um, when will school fees for next year be announced and does ACG and Inspired uh, go into something to support families in difficult situations? Um, so we've already announced um, school fees for 2020-21 and they are available on our website. Um, we, we are working on a case-by-case -case scenario with a number of families um, and we're doing what we can uh, to support uh, families, particularly through financial hardship and difficult times. Um, so just a bit of an indication, um, last year we had um, uh, just over 100, 107 uh, students in our school who were receiving some form of um, uh, tuition fee assistance or, or scholarship, um, obviously not, not full but, but partial. Um, and again, we, we look at that on a case-by-case on -case scenario, um, but you know, we, we're obviously uh, an international school that's um, hiring um, predominantly expat teachers to come in and, and teach an international curriculum. But we will do our best. And at this particular point in time, we need to show compassion. So if we do have families that are experiencing hardship through this really challenging situation, um, they should reach out to me directly um, and then we'll go from there. Um, 
I think that is it in terms of our, our questions. We're certainly over time. Um, thank you very much for attending. If you do have any questions, um, please um, send an email to the school or to myself. Um, we will follow up this um, community meeting um, so that you are able to access the presentation so that there are further details about our contingency plan. Um, and just one last question coming through. Is ACG as a whole considering developing a centralized um, virtual curriculum in case the effects continue and teachers, students cannot return to participate? Um, so we are, um, although we are a group of schools, so 65 schools, we operate as uh, bespoke schools. So ACG School Jakarta, even though we um, are accessing resources, uh, teaching resources, curriculum from uh, other schools, particularly in New Zealand, Australia and Vietnam, um, we will continue to access those resources and uh, develop our, our resources, our curriculum, our, our teaching and learning uh, to cater to, to the needs of the students. But we're really committed to the IBPYP, uh, the Cambridge Lower Secondary and IGCSE program, and of course the IB Diploma program. So that will continue to, to drive our development at a curriculum level. But we are in a, a really unique situation where we can access uh, a lot of resources from really good people across our group of schools. Thanks very much for listening. Um, last thing from me to our students and our staff, uh, stay safe and enjoy the last few days of this extraordinary school year. And um, I really look forward to seeing you at the graduation tomorrow at two o'clock. Um, I look forward to seeing you at our end of year assembly and our prize giving. Um, otherwise, uh, enjoy Friday, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week sometime. Um, thanks very much, everyone.